Today we're gonna to take our digital video and get it to look more like it was shot on film. Before we jump over to DaVinci Resolve, I do wanna let you know that we are going to be working with a couple of paid assets, but the specific ones that we're using today, I actually have a download link in the description to download them for free. And if you want more on my website, I have the full packs. So let's jump over to DaVinci Resolve. So let's uh, take a look at our project settings here. We're just working with 24 frames per second and we will just grab our clip and drag it on and take a look at its frame rate. We can see that that is pretty much 30 frames per second. So we'll uh, be taking a look at slowing down the frame rate here in a second. So if we come up here to effects and we go down to open effects and then just type in here film, we have film damage. Now this is, all the resolve effects can be open or can be added on the edit page, the fusion page or the uh, color page. So if I add this on, it's doing a tremendous job right away. So we can see that it's looking, well, if you don't remember what it used to look like, we can see that it's making it lightly blurred. It's also giving it a color, it's making it warmer. And there's this line here. And if I take a look at the whole shot, we can see that there's a vignette being added, right? So it's dark around the edges. So. These are some things that you might want, some things that you might not want, but two things that I really like in this that I typically keep is the dirt and the scratches. And you can obviously add more scratches, but this is the scratch. As we play it through, it's moving all over. Dirt, you might not be able to see that well. So if I increase this, we can see that we have these little dirt particles all over the screen, right? Obviously, the higher you go, the more there are. That would be insane, but um, yeah, I would just go with three. For the blur, I think I like the blur. I think that that looks good, right? If I turn that on and off, I think that looks good for the blur. Like I said, these are all things you don't have to have on. If your project, if it looks good in your project, then go with it. We also have the temperature and we have the tint shift. I'm gonna zero both of those out so we can see what that looks like. So I don't think that I would want that here. I'd want to do that in a color page and we'll end up actually changing this quite a bit. So that was, that would be the first thing that, you know, is adding in, right? So the edges are a little darker, like we're shooting on like those older lenses that would really make it dark in the corners. We have some damage from the film stock itself it has little scratches. We have some dirt on it and it's softened up a little bit with some blur. The next thing I would do is go over into fusion. And we're not gonna spend much time in here, but we're just going to click on this first little node, right? We're gonna click on the node, shift spacebar, type in here time, and we're gonna go time stretcher, hit enter. That's it. Come up here in the inspector, if your inspector's not open, just open that. We're just gonna double click source. And what this does is whatever number is in here, that's what frame is gonna be on screen. So we wanna animate this. First thing for interpolation, let's go to nearest. We want it to be a whole frame. We don't want it to blur frames and we don't want it to make up fake frames with flow. So we'll go to nearest. We'll open this up with expression and we're going to put in a little equation in here. So we're gonna type in floor. What floor does is it rounds down to the nearest number. We will open well, an open bracket, and in here we're going to type in time, right? Because we want to pay attention to the time, right? And then however many frames you want to be duplicated. So let's just put in here five. So we're going to divide it by, or no, excuse me, three. Let's just do three. Five is probably two minutes. So we'll do three, and then we'll close the bracket, and then we'll times it by the same number, like that. And so now if we come back to the beginning, we see right here we're on frame zero, it's currently showing frame zero. And if I step here with just my arrow keys, it starts at on zero. So we count that as a one frame. Then we go to frame one, that's then two frames of the same thing. Then we go to frame two, which would be three frames of the same thing. Frame three is a new frame until frame six, right? So now if we play this back, we can see that it is starting to have that effect of being a lower frame rate while still playing back at um, normal time when it comes to like time code. So that's how that would work. All right, we're done on the uh, fusion page. Come back to the edit page. This is what we're currently looking at. Let's go over onto the color page because I want to show you something there. But before that, 
Colorfront's new offering, the Streaming Server Mini, is a brand new software solution to stream directly from popular editing, compositing, and color grading applications. Colorfront has developed this software from the ground up to provide the most color accurate streaming solution regardless of viewing device. The Streaming Server Mini is able to stream reference quality footage securely and privately while maintaining a low latency to multiple clients at the same time. All streaming sessions are private and encrypted, requiring an invitation, allowing you and your team to collaborate in just a few clicks. Colorfront is currently offering a free trial so you can try the streaming server mini for yourself. This is a great opportunity to enhance your workflow and improve your streaming quality. And thanks again, Colorfront, for sponsoring this video. We come over to the color page. What we'll see over here is if we open up our effects and type in film, we have fam film damage here. So we could actually add it into these nodes and then be able to change the colors and change the blurriness and all of that all within the color page. So if we go back over to the edit page, we actually don't need to have this on over here. So I'm gonna click here and then just type the trash can or hit the trash can. I was on the edit. Let's go back and show you that. Clicking on the clip, if it's over here on video, we just need to make sure it goes over to edit and then we'll just click on the trash can and it'll get rid of that effect on this, right? So now it's just the playback slowing and then we'll go over to the color page and then over here we can add that film damage over here looks the same and let's turn off the tint and let's turn off the uh or temperature and tint excuse me so now we have the blurry bits we have the vignette and all i'm going to put a node before this just because I feel like that is probably where I want. So just putting one before here. So to do that, you just hold shift and hit S um, to put one before. And then before this node, now we can go in and color this how we want to. So I think the first thing that we would probably want to do is get it to look more in the range that film typically is. Film didn't have this much contrast. So to open up their scopes, if you've never done that before, just click right here, you get your scopes, and then come down to waveform to see the same view. So we can see the sky area, which is right here. It's a little bright. So if we come into here to our contrast and pull our contrast slider down, right around 900, uh, I think that that is looking much, much better. We also see that all of our uh, shadows and stuff have gotten a little creamy. Yeah, it might be your thing, it might not be your thing. If it's not, you can just come down here to lift and drop that back down. I'm just gonna leave it where it's at. I'm gonna take the mid-tones and bring those up a little bit though, something like that, and maybe pull back the contrast a little bit more uh, after we brought up those mid-tones. I think something like that probably looks pretty good. From here, I would say a little too much saturation. So I'm just gonna pull back the saturation. And again, this is all toward, you know, whatever you like. Really, it really comes down to whatever you like. I think that is looking a bit better. And then I'm just going to tint it a little green. So something like that. So now if we take a look at this, right? So that's with that one particular node on and off, or we could turn all of them off. This is what it used to look like. This is what it looks like now. I feel like that looks a little more filmic. I don't like using that term, but sure, we'll go with it, right? So now we're kind of getting somewhere. We slowed down the speed, we changed the color, but there's something else that we can add. And these are the things that down in the description you can download from the website. And there's more on my website that you can obviously have access to as well, but it's a part of the pro membership. If they are of something of interest, take a look at them. Just get it for a month, download everything, um, on the site that you want to use and you can use it forever, then just cancel your membership if you don't find all of the certification courses and stuff of value. So if I come over here into, uh, well, okay, you wouldn't have this until you download it, but let's add on a light leak. So if we take a look at this, light leaks are what are going to, it's, it's like light getting in where you connect the lens or some part of the body, lights getting in and hitting the film. And so we get these little light leaks, right? Just adds more, more. Uh, what, what what would it be a good term to say here? It, it, it adds more uh, texture to your shot. So I'm just going to uh, move this over a little bit. Obviously, we can't see anything here, so let's turn all the black pixels transparent. And so to do that, we'll click on the light leaks. Then we'll come over here into composite and turn it to add. There we are, and I think I'm actually going to flip this particular shot. So if I open up this transform, hit flip, get it to come from the other side, and we'll get it to go something like this, right? 
let's uh, maybe shorten that up a little bit and get it to go like that. Because I just noticed as I added this on, you see this like sharp or bright bit. Maybe that is what's causing this, almost like a flare. But then you got all of this as if it's like a light leak too. So I think that really added in quite a bit there. The other thing too is, okay, let's say you don't like, you know, this being this color and you don't like this being this color. You can go over and you can color these as well. So you can come over here and let's say we just go into hue. We can switch those colors around as much as you want. Or you can come into hue versus hue curve, right? So this is your normal curve. Come into hue versus hue and say we want this uh, blue area. So let's grab this whole blue area right here. Let's zero that out. Again, and let's take this blue area and make it green. Whoops. So now it's green, right? So you can color these uh, however you want. Uh, it's really up to you. So let's come back over. I think that that's looking pretty good, but we're not done yet because we have one more element that if you download it, you would have access to as well. And that is going to be an overlay of 16 millimeter film. So if we come back to the beginning, it says like Kodak and it has a little thing with the little holes, right, for the sprocket. And overall, I think this is really adding in even more to uh, the overall aesthetic to this. Now, the, on the website, obviously, there's a bunch of these with different sizes. You know, this is 16, there's 35, and then there's 70 millimeter film uh, with because they're all the sprockets are all different on all of those. Uh, as well as this one's only 1080. I have uh, uh, 4K ones over there, UHD. I think that is looking pretty cool, if you ask me. Now. Other things that you can do. Let's say let's say we go and grab another video. So let's use the couple walking by the lake. Sure. So we have this one, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is go right over into Fusion. Now down here we can see that this one's Fusion as well. So I'll come over here. I know that that's the Fusion one. I take this little node, Control C, Controller Option C, and then or com Controller Command, sorry, C, and then uh, Controller Command V paste that there so now we have the 16 or we have the the um, you know slower frame rate and then we could just take both of these and holding down alt or option and dragging now we have that and we can make these longer okay they're not long enough so we could just duplicate them again if we want it to like that the other thing is if we come back over into color let's open up our clips we can see that this first clip here um, we had all of the, the colors and stuff that we added. So let's click on our new shot and middle mouse button. We'll copy all of those. So now that looks like it's a little, a little more vintage. And so we come back over to here. Now we have that vintage look. Now I just noticed one thing that I wasn't a huge fan of that I'd probably change. I don't like how bright this is and I probably should have did that before, but it's okay. We'll just go like this and I'm just going to pull down like the mids and the highs. So I don't, this isn't so bright, right? <clears throat> like that. Now I'm gonna click on these other ones and just duplicate it for those as well, right? So that they all have that same exact. So this little bit down here isn't that bright. Uh, let's see how that looks now. Okay, I think that's looking a bit better, right? Yeah. Probably looking a bit better. Probably don't need the second one. I probably just use one. And if you want to, you can kind of like feather these and just to make it random, just have it right there. And so now, as it goes on, probably want this to render cache, but you get the idea on how that would work going across just like that. So that's pretty much what I would do to give it more of a vintage look. Again, there are a bunch of tools that you can use. I can quickly show you one here. I have this film convert. So instead of having this color stuff here, I can just remove that. Let's put another uh, node before I can add film convert. Now that's like a paid thing. I don't really have any uh, connection with them, but this adds uh, all sorts of different uh, film stocks they have in here to you know look all sorts of different ways, but it's not something that is needed, uh, but it is something that you can get to get a more uh, filmic look as well. So a bunch of tools out there that you can use, but it's really up to you and what works for you. Like I said, they used all sorts of different chemicals to be creative and you should be creative too. Get your own unique look because if you look at all films, 
There's all sorts of different wacky colors going on. Like I said, in the description, there are links to download those assets. If you do want more than just those, I also linked the, the packs. Everything on the website, it is just that one membership fee. So if you only want just that stuff, get it for a month, download everything you want off of the website and cancel. And you can use all of those assets for life. But with that being said, thanks so much for watching. Until next one, guys. Peace.